we got former Bills, Ryan Davis, defensive end. Um, y'all might be a little young. You know what I'm saying? You guys are just coming onto the bandwagon because you know the Bills are doing big things right now. So you may not know, but for those that do know, you know my man could, could, could get after it, right? But uh, he had a short stint with the Bills. So uh, that being said, we waiting for my man to come on. So uh, we we're gonna chop it up, man. We're gonna. He has a lot of confidence in uh, what the Bills are doing today. I don't like my ball cap right now. I'm not feeling this one. I'm not feeling this one, man. I don't know. I don't know. Ah, right, this one. I think I feel this one's a little better. This one's a little better. There we go. Um, so yeah, man, um, he has high hopes for the Bills and we're going to, we're going to chop it up, uh, and, uh, and see how, and see what he thinks and see how we feel, see what he, what he sees. Maybe he, he sees things that we don't see that he's going to shed some light on. Uh, I'm actually very curious to see, uh, where he's going with this. Cause he, he says we got a lot of promise. Uh, we got a lot of promise. So, I mean, yeah, listen, man, we're going to, we're going to see what it is. Uh, Litton B22, the guy is from the Cowboys. Yeah. He played for the Cowboys, started off his career with Jacksonville. Uh, had a had a stint with the Cowboys, um, and uh, we scooped him up after that. And uh, yeah, I mean, we'll let him chat on uh, on what he's been doing. Um, so yeah, man, we're gonna we're gonna do it up. My man Dan Brown's in the building. What's going on, Dan Brown? Uh, for those that don't know, we got a we got a new brother on the team right now, and he's running the Facebook page and he's doing his live thing. So he's doing big things. Uh, okay, my man Davis is in the building. Hold on, I'm, I'm gonna get you, man. There he is, my guy. Boom. All right, man, we're going to with my guy, Ryan Davis. We're going to wait him out. And uh, it's his birthday uh, coming this weekend, man. So we got a shout out. We're uh, good. There he is. What's going on? I see you flip the hat. I see you flip the ball cap. Yeah, I had to I saw that ball. I, I saw the flip. Yeah, I had to flip it real quick. <laughs> What's going on, man? What's going on? What's happening? Not much, man. I just got in town. I just got to Tampa. So uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm kicking it now. You a Florida boy, man? Oh yeah, for sure, man. for sure. Yeah, I got you. Okay, but listen, man, listen. I'm gonna I'm give a, a, a an intro because some people might not know who you are. So I gotta yeah. I gotta give a shout out. So this is my guy Ryan Davis. Uh, did a short stint with the Bills, but enough of a stint that people still know who you are. Yeah, I mean, you get after that quarterback, big fella. Uh, listen, man, welcome. Thanks for chopping it up with me and the Buffalo Fanatics. How you been? How you doing? What's going on? Uh, I'm all right, man. You know, appreciate you having me, man. For real. Uh, you know what it is, man. So let, let's before we get into Bill's talk, I got I got other questions I have to ask, and others want to know about this, right? right. So uh, you started off your career as a uh, an undrafted free agent. Yeah. How tough is that to be an undrafted? You have high hopes of being drafted, right? But then you go undrafted. It's not in the hopes. How do you how do you deal with that? Uh. You just got to make do with what you got at that point. And uh, it was tough because all, all through the process, I'm here, you know, I'm going to go – I can go as high as four. You know, I was, I was one of the day, fringe day two, late day two uh, to day three guys. So, uh, but to not hear your name call, you know, during the draft, I mean, it was heartbreaking. But at the same time, you got to kind of – I got to kind of choose where I want to go at the end. Like, you know, in the seventh round, well, I probably got calls from eight, ten teams. And then you really get to choose where you want to go. So, uh, you know, for me, mm -hmm. and, uh, being – I went to school in Daytona. Jacksonville was only an hour away. And, you know, I was familiar with the coaching staff there. And, uh, matter of fact, the D-line coach ran my pro day. So, uh, you know, I was like, you know, I'm going here. So, first four years, you know, I just it, I was able to go into camp and, you know, uh, make some noise and, you know, claw my way onto a roster. It, but it only makes sense. I mean, and that's the silver lining, I guess you can call it, because – you get to choose where you go instead of somebody saying, "Oh, you going over here," and you got no choice but to go to unfamiliar yeah. land, and now you got to make do. But now you get to choose. Yeah. Uh, and on top of that, I mean, mm -hmm. the D line culture is doing your combine, so that makes a lot of sense. And there's no tags. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it did. Yeah, no state tags. That helps out, especially with uh, you know, fresh out of college. You know, I didn't so that helped out a lot. You know what I'm saying? No, I, so, I, uh, I, I got you. And me being uh, only three hours from uh from Tampa, being only three hours from home. You know, all, my family was able to come up uh, at any time to watch me. Uh, whenever I did make the roster, they, you know, they were able to watch me play. So that was cool. No doubt. Yeah. How was how would how did you feel about coming to Buffalo? Now, before you came to Buffalo, uh, at that point, you still had you still had the choice to choose where you wanted to go. Uh -huh. Why why choose Buffalo? Uh, really, for me, I didn't. You know, I think it was a no brainer for me. Um, at the time, the GM Whaley, I think it was Whalen, Doug, Doug. Doug, my man Doug. I would, I you know, I took a visit. I hung out with Doug like a, a night or two before. Um, 
I liked them, you know. He, we, were just, we just hung out. We went to the bar and all. I'm like, you know, I got a, you know, I got a physical in the morning and stuff like that. But we, we just hung out talking and talking football. And I, was like, I, re I felt really comfortable. So uh, being in the snow and that, some stuff like that, that didn't really scare me. I was kind of, you know, I wanted to be, I wanted to experience that and all that kind of stuff. But coming to it Buffalo, uh, you know, and I was coming off an injury too. So the stat, that was a big part. The, the training staff. Uh, really was hands on with me, and they made me feel comfortable with being here. Uh, since I was a free agent, you know, I was hurt, so I, it really could have been a scary time for me, as far as my career at that moment. Um, I could have been out the game that year, but Buffalo took a chance on me, so I was like, you know what, uh, you know, this is where I want to be. So it was a no brainer. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys are tuning in for the first time, uh, this is your boy Rico. Y'all know who I am. And this is my man Ryan Davis. Yeah, former Buffalo Bill. Oh, you celebrating already? It's your birthday. I know it's coming up to your birthday. Yeah, it's coming up Monday. Yeah, oh yeah, that's why I'm in Tampa. Uh, I'm gonna so what celebrating you, what this what weekend. You, what are you sipping on? A uh, little Ciroc BS. This right here. Oh, <laughs> my man's got taste. Yeah. My yeah. man's got taste. I like that. Yeah, that it's smooth though, right? Smooth. Yeah, it's smooth. Oh, it's smooth. Uh, yeah. All right, so my man Ryan Davis is in the building right now. So, um, I do have some questions about um, the when you joined the Apollo. Uh, I think the Orlando Paul, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. I'm getting it right. All right. So yeah. you joined the Alliance, the Alliance Football League. Yeah. Okay? So what was that like? And when you see the XFL going on right now, and I'm sure you've got some boys that are still playing right now. Oh, yeah, for sure. You hear differences as to what the Alliance League did wrong and what XFL is doing right? Yeah. Uh, money. <laughs> they got the actual money to – back up everything that they're doing and that's the okay. biggest thing you know for the AAF I think we were just fed like you know empty promises I'll put it like that you know um, but for a lot of guys in that situation you know me you know I saw a second chance at coming back to the league so I really wanted to use that as a springboard into you know somebody's camp or something like that which a lot of guys are doing with XFL now yeah so for that to crumble the way it did and they played with a lot of guys futures you know, I'm a veteran, so uh, it was really, you know, it, it hurt, but I really felt more so for the younger guys that, you know, that that might have been over, like how like I was. They were overlooked, so they yeah, got to play, they trying to play with the opportunity. I had opportunity to play seven years, so, you know, I, I just didn't like that. It left a sour taste, and, um, I mean, still at the moment, you know, you, the lawyers are still fighting on the players' behalf for that, so. Um, That's a tough one, and now you see the XFL doing big things. You're like, yeah. yeah. It looks good so far. It, really it looks, looks good, good, man. Looks How fun. old are you right now? I'm 30. I'll be 31 Monday, yeah. Gee, you still you still got some juice in you, boy. You can... I, I, I still got some juice. You know, I'm going to Canada this year, so. Oh, I know you are. That's I'm about what, to that, speak on that. That's going to that's gonna be that's gonna be fun, man. I'm excited about that. Uh, so, like, and, and, and I'm going to segue right into that because I'm from Canada, right? So, oh, yeah. Only, oh, yeah, yeah. You're only four okay. hours away from me, so I might have to, when you come okay. up to Ottawa, I might have to come okay. to you. I might give you a call and we go, you know, we go and nah, talk for real. It up. Yeah, for real. We're going to do that. About it. And you're going to a nice team, man. Yeah. The Argos, the Argos, the Argos can play. They got some ball yeah. players on that. Yeah, yeah. One of my, uh, one of the guys from the city, James Wilder, he used to run wild up there. Yeah. And I know he, used to, uh, he was in Buffalo. He spent some time in Buffalo, too. So. No doubt. Oh, we I all think he was in Montreal now. Yeah, we still got love for James Wilder, man. Now he's going to Montreal, though. He's an Alouette now. Yeah, so now I'm gonna go against him now. He, yeah, it's gonna be fun. He's talking a bit of Francais. He's gonna be talking French by the time you guys are done. I'll tell you that oh, much. <laughs> oh yeah, they they do speak French, huh? Oh yeah, yeah, boy. Oh, yeah. Haitian, man. We speak. We I speak three languages, boy. Don't play with okay. me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta <laughs> learn. You're you from Florida, man. There's a lot of Haitians out there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, especially what uh, say. especially down, yeah, especially down south, like Miami. Oh Miami, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. All right, so let's let's get into it right now. We're gonna talk some Bills football. All right. So, you you came up with a tweet that said, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, that you see some good things coming Buffalo's way. And yep. other than the Chiefs, the Bills are the team that people should be looking for. Why? Why? Elite defense, uh, young, up-and-coming quarterback. Uh, I really like Singletary a lot. I think he's going to have one of those Christian McCaffrey-type seasons or that kind of track. You know what I'm saying? Uh, John Brown played unbelievable. I think he played better than a lot of people expected him to. Cole Beasley, he just always open in the slot. Um, so I think, and, and you have a lot of money in the cap. Oh, you know. So, so <laughs> I mean, and it's, it's, you know, and it's hard to win in Buffalo for opposing teams. So, and, you know, the facilities and everything. Once guys take that visit 
and I don't know where that whole notion of uh, free agents don't like to come to Buffalo. I don't know when that started or how, but once guys come take that visit, like you know, they'll see like it's it's for real up there. And I and I seen and I seen the love. Shoot, when I was there, you know, when I was hanging out with uh with Doug uh, at the time. So, um, you know, I think that's why Buffalo's gonna have a, a real good season. I think the AFC East is theirs for sure because Brady Brady's gone. I you mean, think Brady? They, even yeah, even if back? even if he comes back, I still you know I I, I don't know. This Brady's the I don't know. <laughs> it, I don't, I, nobody knows. That's the thing. I don't nobody know where knows. he's going. Yeah. Nobody but knows. I, I think I think he'd I think be a good so. fit with with uh, with the L.A. Chargers. That's just me. I, I was thinking the Chargers. I I thought about uh, the Raiders too. Uh, who else? Who else has a pretty good like? Rock? But yeah, the Chargers might be the best fit. I think the Chargers might be the best one for real, man. The so squad, the squad around him is strong, like real strong. See, I got, I got to say something because I have, I have a video out right now, and you mentioned John Brown, all yeah. right. And I'm not gonna keep it too long because I know you're gonna be getting your thing together. But John Brown, and we talk about all these big time receivers that are out there. Yeah. But then you guys, you guys, you, we have guys. Go ahead, do your thing. You guys have, you got, we have guys like John Brown that get not as much love. Right. But and people want to bring receivers on, but he could be a receiver one type type player. Yeah. But people keep playing and say, "Nah, man, we need a real number one." But I mean, listen, man, you look at the numbers that all these guys, that these other guys are doing, and that people deem as number one receivers. Yeah, and John Brown's right there. Do I mean, the Bills need a number one type receiver, or can they just deal with a complimentary nice receiver? Or do they need a number one so they can I think have they can John do Brown? It. It's nice to have a number one, like a, I guess you know. a, a I guess in the, the draft is pretty deep with receivers. It's it nice is. to get one. Like nobody's gonna complain if they get one. But I don't think that's a real big necessity. Well, who's on the who's on the other side of John? So you got okay. So here's the deal. You got John Brown. Yeah. You had we had Zay Jones, but then we shipped off Zay Jones. Yeah. yeah. You got Cole, my the Cole Beasley. Yeah. Then you got Duke Williams. All right. Solid. I like he's solid. He's solid. I think so too. But people yeah. don't even talk about it. And then we got Andre Roberts. And then the other guys that we have are three agents. We got Isaiah McKenzie. Um, and then we got Robert Foster. Robert Foster. Yeah. We don't know what happened to Robert Foster this year. He's, he's a deep threat. Did he, did he not get like, did he not get targets or something like that? He's a deep threat, right? Brother, man, I'm saying, man, he was nice last year and we, yeah. we saw big things for him and then he, he just flashed. disappeared yeah. this year. Sometimes it happens. It happens. I mean, yeah, yeah it happens. I so mean, with, I thought, I don't think the fan base would be mad if, if Bean takes, you know, uh, whoever, like, whichever receiver falls to them, really, because it's deep. Do we take a receiver in the first round? Y'all, that's your own. What, what pick do you guys have? 22. How y'all feel about y'all O-line? Your O-line's pretty solid, my boy. O-line's all right. Yeah, we, we still have some young guys at the O-line. My boy D-Dog see this. You already know. Uh, D-Dog! Yo, we had a solid year this year, man. At 22, uh, I'm, yeah, none of the Alabama receivers are going to be there, huh? At 22. Oh, you don't think so? What if we trade up? If y'all trade up, I think y'all could get uh, one of them. I like those. Who else is good? The guy from – is it a guy from Colorado? Ah, he got a – Oh, uh, you like Chanel. Chanel, I like him. I like this This is Chanel. I liked him when I saw him. He got some, uh, he got some like, some wiggle. Like, like, once he get the ball in his hand – he can make something it's happen. It's all, yo, I mean, he, he, he's a rat. See, the thing for me is I need a receiver that's got yak. The yeah. minute you get the ball in your hand, show me what you yeah. can do with it instead of just going right. down. I don't want no possession right. receivers. You feel me? Yeah, I like him. Yeah, yeah. You need some guys that's going to, like, like Golden Tate. Get the ball, get the yak. Get some yak. Get the yak. Um, he's more, now, he's me, a little more explosive, too, yeah. So I'm going to I'm gonna flip it to the running back room because you said you like Devin Singletary. Yeah. So this, this league now – it's it's all about having one to two backs to kind of complement one another, but I I heard you mention that he gives you kind of like um, yeah he gives you that call? McCaffrey kind of McCaffrey kind of vibe. So yeah. does McC does he need another back to complement him, or is he good just by himself? I think he's got enough talent. Uh, how big is he? he's not a real big dude? No, nah, he's like five seven, maybe five eight. So yeah, I might you know. What, did he spend some time? Did he? He wasn't hurt last year, was he? He was hurt a little bit. He had a bit of an ankle injury or a thigh or a hamstring, so, so he was up a little bit. I would probably go. With, you know, I would probably have another back, just you know, for Buffalo. Just so a, a speed back or power back? Shit, I I keep speed up there for real. My why man, not have, why not have two? Like you know, 
because single like Singletary's fast, but he is shifty, boy. Shifty as hell, man. A little baby shaky. Yeah, he was shaky in the hole. Like, yeah, it's just gonna be tough to get a clean hit, and he can catch out the backfield and make a lot of stuff happen. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. now I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip it to the defensive side of the ball now because I don't want to keep it too long. So okay. our defensive front is nice. We got decisions to make on Jordan Phillips. And now this is your forte. This is where you spent your time. Yeah. I like Jordan Phillips. He had a monster year with like nine point, almost 10 sacks. He did. He, he about to get paid. But like, <laughs> and he needs to get paid. Yeah. Are we, is it worth it for us to pay him? Or was it one of those, man, I got to get my money and then go somewhere else? Like, what was that? What's that like? I think it's worth it for y'all, for Buffalo to pay him. Because, uh, I mean, because he knows the system. He, like, he, he thrived in it. That's how I see it. He thrived in it. And, you know, he, he expresses this. I think he wants to be there, too, right? He does. From, from what I've seen, you know, um, I think, yeah, you got to pay him and you keep him in the house. Cause that's a guy who knows the system. And he, he's still pretty young, too, isn't he? Or, uh, he I think he's, he's still in his 20s. I think he's, like, 27. Yeah, he's okay. Oh, not even. I think he's younger than that, actually. Yeah, so you got to think think you pay him, you know, let you know, get some – guys around him. What are they going to do with uh, what are they going to do with Shaq? Shaq, I should Shaq ask you that. Up. What should we do with Shaq? Well, well, Shaq had a good season this year, right? This, this he was did. His best, this was his best year since he'd been drafted. How many sacks he had? Like seven? He had, he had uh, I think he had five sacks this year. Five sacks? Okay. Yeah, five sacks this year. He was, he, was, he was splitting time with uh, Trent. He was. If they, if so, they bring him back, I think they bring him back like on a one-year kind of Prove it, deal, I, bro. He he's not doing no one year, man. He's gonna he's trying to get his money. Yeah, but I, I'm not mad if yeah. So he probably hit the market and go get a uh, five sacks. They probably go get like you know, because the market for pass rushing, you can get five sacks and get a fifty million dollar contract now. How it's going for real? All right, so I'm a, I'm gonna put you on the spot a little bit. Yeah. You look at our quarterback right now, Josh Allen. Yeah. And I see a lot of promise in Josh Allen, man. He could be yeah. a, a player in this league for a long time. Are you seeing yeah. what I'm seeing? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. He got all the tools. What I really like about him is his, uh, his improvisational skills. Like, mm -hmm. he just make it happen. You know how uh, not quite Aaron Rodgers yet, not quite Russell Wilson yet, but you can see it. You get what I'm saying? Like he He's can, on that level? He, not, not that level yet, but he's like, you know, you can kind of see him get out the pocket and make stuff happen with his legs and all that kind of stuff, which kind of surprised me, too. I didn't know he was uh, that athletic. You know, I knew he had. A, he ran. He ran an okay. Four. He ran a solid four. Did he run like a four six? Oh, he ran like a four six four seven, man. And he scored yeah, that's, nine touchdowns. Like, come on, man. He's he like six foot. And he like six six, right? Six. Oh, five. he's a big boy. Cool. He's so, a big yeah. boy. Sneaky athleticism, powerful arm. Um, but he, he's young, so it's a lot of stuff that he's gonna improve on, and he's just gonna be good. I, I really think he's gonna. He's gonna run that. Uh, he's gonna run that division for sure. So you came on when Doug Whaley was yep, you. Yeah. My man, I'm going to tell you, man, my man Doug Whaley gets a lot of hate from a lot of Bills fans, man. I don't know why. I don't yeah. know why, but I I, I was a Doug Whaley fan. Why does yeah. he get hate? I really, I really can't call it because uh, that was my, like, when I when I came there in 17, you know, uh, he was cool. Like, I, I, you know, maybe they didn't like the draft picks. I don't know, but I, I don't, yeah, I like Whaley as a, as a man. Like, he was very cool, calm. Uh, he brought me in. He, he shot it like what he kept, players, he kept it real. Yeah, that's what players should want. Like he was a guy that kept it all the way one hundred, and he just you know he you know told me what I need to do if I wanted to get paid. That's what I got to do. Um, you know, but he he kept it one hundred, and that's what guys should want. You know, you don't want no GM that's gonna lie to you and tell you all these promises and then just renege on everything. Nah, he he kept it he kept it straight with me. So he was a straight shooter. You know, so I, you, it must be something else going on. Why he? It, it must be because a lot of people say he wastes a lot of money. He's he's just giving people money left, right, seven. Yeah, that can make <laughs> that can make that can make people mad. Yeah, man. <laughs> and then you came in and played. Uh, Sean McDermott was coach then when you came through. Yeah, yeah, so, that, yeah. That was the first year. Yeah, yeah, that was first year. So how how was that? I don't know if you remember a lot uh, with McDermott, but like how how what what was the difference you saw with him that made this team the way it is right now? Uh. I think his approach was always uh, always the same. You know, trust the process. That it, it started right there, and now you see the. You know, it's a process. So that I think that's what's been really exciting to see. You know, him 
from he was the same from day one, trusting the process, trusting yeah. the process. And even even the year that he didn't do so hot, it was you know it was only a few players they needed to plug and play, and boom, just like that, they're back in the talks of playoffs and all this kind. Of, made the playoffs what the last two years out of three, no so, doubt. You know, no it's, doubt, it's, no doubt. It's a guy that uh you know he's defensive minded, he knows what he wants. He's young, he's young enough to relate to the guys too. And at the same time, uh, listen to the guys, you know, whenever there's something, uh, you know, that needs to be addressed. So he's a player's coach, and guys love that about him. So, um, you know, so I, I think the future is uh, really bright for real. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm with and that, man. And, Le- and Leslie Frazier's still there, too, right? Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Less. And you still got the best, in my opinion, the best safety duo in Michael Hyde, Jordan Poyer, man. Speak on it, man. I've, I've I've been saying I've been saying and I'm not saying that because I played there, I'm saying it because it's true. I don't. My first year there, didn't they both have like five or six picks? And then bro, they think, were killing I, it that year, man. And Might I think have Jordan was like, yeah, they, they, Jordan's been snubbed for out like the last few years. I, yes. I don't know how he didn't make a Pro Bowl the year we he made the play, ended the draft. I don't know how he didn't make the Pro Bowl. We I, see. Here's the thing. Why does Buffalo always get overlooked with them? Look at Trey White. Trey White had a monster. That's what year. I'm saying. Yeah. Once a year, but ain't nobody looking our way. We got the two best safeties in the league. Ain't nobody looking our way. That's right. why it's always Buffalo versus everybody, everybody. man. And, and you can really like, and you can really see that. And I think that's why I kind of, um, you know, identify with, identify with Buffalo a little bit because I, I, I always felt like I was the underdog, or overlooked, or you know, I always felt like it was me versus you know, whoever. You know what I'm no saying? Doubt. I kind of clawed my way to make a career out of myself. So I think that's why I got so much love for Buffalo and being there and experiencing it and getting engulfed in the culture. Uh, you know, it's just it's, it's just exciting to see all everything that's happening for them. Right I now. love it, man. I, and I like the fact that you still pay attention to the Bills oh, yeah. and see what they're doing. Oh yeah, for sure. I check on yeah, and I check and I try to check on all the teams. I don't check on. Um, I don't really check on Dallas as much. You know, I didn't really Dallas. I don't. I don't want to talk about the year I was there. I had a lot of stuff going on personally. You didn't like, I, you didn't like, you didn't like your stay in Dallas? Oh, no, I loved it. I loved it out there. Don't get me wrong. We were 13 and 3. Yeah. Uh, that was Dak and Zeke's rookie year. It was it was amazing. You know, what a time we were winning. Oh, man, for real. Because I'm coming from Jacksonville where we weren't winning games at all. Right. So now I'm 13 and 3 in the biggest market in pro football, pro sports. And seeing the love you get when you go places and all this kind of stuff. And, it was surreal for me, but as for me as a player that year, I didn't do nothing. You know, I was so me, yeah, I was I was up and down. I had the birth of my daughter, you know, I, my mind was elsewhere, so I didn't do too hot. Yeah. Uh, see, there's a lot on your mind. See, that makes oh, a big sure. difference. Yeah, and it was, and then the way I got there, you know, Jacksonville cut me. I was like, yeah, that, it, I had just signed a contract back to Jacksonville, and they cut me. So it was like, that. you're salty. I, oh yeah, I was salty that whole that whole 2016. Besides the birth of my daughter, let's just, yeah. Let's just, yeah no, no, listen, man, I feel you. And then you kind of rejuvenate yourself when you come to yeah, Buffalo and you do your exactly. thing, so I get it. Exactly. And I was, you know, and then, and then yeah, and then 2018, that's when I got a little salty again when they let me go. <laughs> I know. I feel you, man. And, and you know what? It's the business part of it. Yeah, it is. It's the business part of it. So yeah. I'm going to ask you this, because right now, this is what the conversation is now. And I'm not going to take too much of your time, because I know I keep Are saying you? it, but we, we vibe it right now. So, oh, yeah, we vibe it. I'm good, yeah. Are we good? We straight. So right now, the chatter right now is Dak Prescott needs to take a hometown discount, right? And and the chatter is because Tom Brady did it. Tom Brady was like, "Yo, don't pay me, pay my guy, so we can win." But this is a business at the end of the day. Should Dak take give the discount or yo give him my money? Give him his money. Dak <laughs> Dak got all the leverage in the world. When you hear when you start hearing teams talking about uh, they need to give him a hometown discount. That's when you know you really can put your feet up and just relax. Cause, no, like I'm not gonna do that. What if that get hurt? that gets hurt? No, maximize all your money while you can. That played for two million dollars total, I think. I don't know, something like that. Three million dollars. Yeah. His first four years. That is. He's due. Vastly underpaid. He's due. He's so due. Whatever, whatever the market is for that. I hope he gets it, you know, and it's it's not it's not that it's not that job to worry about the pockets of the team. You know, nah. that, it's that job to worry about his own pockets and what he can do. You know, Dak has been the vet. I don't think he's been. I don't think he's missed a game. 
He's this guy, he doesn't miss games, man. He doesn't he miss games. Hurt. And if you look at his numbers, they're better than golf. He's better than Wentz. Even though Wentz missed some time, the num like Dak's numbers as a fourth mm -hmm. round pick coming out. Numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. So you have to take Dak. Probably Dak probably gonna be like 37, 38 mil a year. So that's how I see. Yo, it. And then, and that, then Deshaun gonna get make... forty. Yeah, and then Mahomes gonna get forty two. <laughs> does that make defensive players and like other players like sick to the stomach when they see all that money going to the quarterback? You're like, damn, man. Not sick, but it's like, ooh, like damn, I should have played quarterback type <laughs> type. <laughs> No, for real, when because I think uh, no disrespect to Chase Daniels, I think he was like getting seven million a year to back up uh, somebody for some years. I'm like, damn, I should have been like a backup QB, or backup something. quarterback, do something. You can get paid for real. So and it's I, uh, that's that might be the move right there for my son if he plays football. Well, hey, you better you better be, start making the sling that rock. Oh yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> He run around him though. He might be a basketball player. He's gonna be tough. no doubt about it, man. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, this is my guy Ryan Davis. Uh, it's his birthday weekend. He's gonna be celebrating. He's sipping on that Ciroc right mm, now. Yep. He's feeling nice. Yeah. Um, so, are you excited to be going to the CFL? I am. I really you want me am. Want to give you some pointers? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. Park. Listen, get yourself a parka in the wintertime because it's a different type of cold when you come to Canada. It's a little different. Right, it's a little different than Buffalo. It's, it's a little different. Uh, the Buffalo, a lot of people talk about Buffalo this, that, and the third. Now, nah, when you come over here, it's a little different. But you in Toronto, though, so Toronto, they got nice little weather, so you straight. Yeah, but get your invest in a nice little jacket. Listen, I didn't know nothing about lake effect until I got to Buffalo. That's a different kind of like wind coming off that lake. Yeah, that's a different, different ball game. It's a different ball game. I had no idea that snow game was all, wasn't that? I think that was a lake effect game. Oh, you remember that one? Oh, that was fun. That was, that's probably my most, that's probably my favorite game of all time. I, I hear that. I hear that, man. But listen, man, I want I want to wish you good luck in the CFL, man. I'm, I mean, you guys, I'm, I'm I'm listen, man. Five, I need five to seven sacks from you, man. Oh, nah, yeah, for real. That's the, nah, the standard is my standard is much higher than that. I feel like I'm I gotta redeem myself, you know, for the last yeah, I gotta redeem myself. Let me let me tell you something. This, this the CFL game is built on speed. I'm going to tell you yeah. that right now. Because B, it's, it's, not, it's like three downs, right? Two, two, three, three downs, downs, man. Three downs. You got to it, it's, it's go. Right. <laughs> you got to go. get after that, man. I'm Back. telling you right now. So yeah. do me a favor. When you hit Ottawa, when you guys play Ottawa, I'm going to try. I'm gonna come out there and, and watch that game. I'm going to try to hit you up. And uh, we might have to chop it up, man. All right. I'm on for that. Y'all no doubt about it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my guy, Ryan Davis. It's the Buffalo Fanatics. Ryan, I appreciate your time. Good luck this season. Uh, we might have to chop it up this offseason again to see how what the Bills have done in the moves and what you yeah. think about it. You down for that? Yeah, just let me know. No, oh, my man, my man. So I salute you. Enjoy your weekend. Don't go too ham. You know what I'm saying? You got to function, and then we'll talk to you, my G. I'll try not to. All right, my man. All right, my man.